Get your temperature for COVID. There you go. We got to Into the presence of the King. We got to bring something, a sacrifice of praise. So lift up your hands to the Lord and give Him praise. Lift up your hands.
spiritually. What do you mean lukewarm? Well, you're not hot. You're not cold, but you're not hot. You know, initially when all of this mess started around the world and the quarantine began to hit, I thought, okay, in spite of the negative side, the downside, not much going out, etc., that people would have understood the message of the times and would have taken this time to draw near to God. And for the first two weeks, that's what happened. But as it dragged on, it's now that I realize that a lot of people that talk tough, they don't have the intestinal fortitude. They can't handle sustained pressure. Pressure one day, yes. Two days, that's all right. But three days, three weeks, three months, by then... 90% of the people have fallen by the wayside. They don't have what it takes to handle stress. They don't have what it takes to handle pressure. I'm talking about big men, big women, talking about I'm too stressed. And why doesn't God put an end to this thing? You haven't seen anything yet. What's going to happen when World War III hits? You can't even go out and buy nor sell anything. What are you going to do then? Die? You can't just complain about stuff and give up and cave in and quit and get all negative and toxic and fill yourself, surround yourself with people just like you, negative and toxic. You've got to find something. No wonder the psalmist said, I will lift up my eyes from the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. Some people are just, they, they've gone bone dry, they've gone ice cold, they've gone lukewarm. And uh, as one passed, I heard him, he was in tears. He said, some of the drunks that he got off Skid Row, got them off the liquor. They've been there now for over a year. And when this thing hit and sustained and wouldn't, they couldn't go to church. He said, some of them called him and told him, Rev, I'm back on the juice. I can't take the pressure anymore. I'm back to drinking. That's my only place of solace I find my peace at the bottom of the bottle they gone back to drinking liquor and he said all of his work that he worked with them has gone down the drain not everybody can handle pressure this testing period is showing you who you really are not who you thought you were some of us were big dogs barking now we're little puppies in a corner folded up and we <laughs> We, we don't have the strength to give a good hallelujah. And for those of my Guyanese friends, you got it three times. You got COVID, then you got Venezuela, then you got elections and GCOM and lawsuit and CCJ, and you got it hitting you on every side. Well, let me drink some coconut water to that. You're on the world stage now. Oh, you didn't think all that oil will bring you all these Kavaka mites coming from every corner? The nation is on a dinner table and everybody is hungry and every nation wants their piece of it. And with the kind of leadership that you have in the, in the political parties, the level of greedy men that we've got there, and uh, they don't have national interests at heart. There's just a few of them. They're just really out to get themselves, get their pockets filled as much as possible. You know I'm telling the truth. But the point is, when you're on the world stage, when you're playing with the big boys now, you can't expect that everything is just going to go smooth. All of you used to boast and cry, oh, we got the oil, we got the oil. And you wouldn't even sit down to think that uh, you haven't done anything, you haven't even studied what oil is about, what industries will come to the country. So the folks in Trinidad who know what that's about, they have come over and they are making 
a killing, buying up property and doing stuff. When you're sitting there talking about we, we got oil, but you haven't aligned yourself in any way, shape or form, and you're getting hit on every side by everything, and you're stressed out very easily, and right now you're so frustrated. <laughs> if people call me all the time to talk about how they're frustrated. Well, where's your toughness? Where's greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world? Where's all that Bible that you guys used to preach and know? Where's your strut? Where's all that big boastful attitude that you had? We got oil. And you're all there foreign, you all need to shut your mouth because we got oil. Where's all that swagger? You lost your swagger? You lose too easy. You cave in too easy. You give up too easy. You got to find your spunk and find your spark and find your fight. You got to learn to sing. Not one blade of grass will be given to anybody. Romans, Revelation, sorry, Revelation 3, 2, 15, and 16. Be watchful. I'm, I'm giving you some formula from scripture. Be watchful. Y'all say good evening to Peggy Russell. That's my schoolmate right there. She used to be the uh, one of the hockey greats of the day. Peggy Russell, Paula Sampson, those are two lions, lionesses in the hockey field. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain. Revelation 3, verses 2, then verses 15, and verses 16. Revelation 3, 2, 15, and 16. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found your works perfect before God. You know, when I give that prophetic word about the flood that's coming, and I got my cuss off and tell off, and I'm the false prophet and everything else, and I call for the prayer meeting, etc., etc. Oh, we, we, then we had this, uh, some man called himself the Pope there, went on a rant with his sidekick, and they really give me a good royal cuss off that he's the only prophetic voice in the nation and yeah yeah and um anyway people started praying anyhow you can't lose if you pray if somebody encouraged you to pray okay that's not a that's not a sinful thing to do go ahead and pray and i i understood that quite a few people were praying so i went down to some serious praying and fasting too you know what the Lord said to me one night as I was praying and fasting? He said, the people are praying. I nearly leaped off the ground and shouted, nearly touched the roof in the bedroom here. And when my feet landed back, he said, it's not something to rejoice about. So I thought, I thought that had to be Satan. I said, the blood of Jesus. <laughs> the blood of Jesus on you, Satan. The Lord said, stop wasting the blood. It's me. Well, my sheep know my voice. So I, I, I was very embarrassed to tell you. I couldn't say a word. And he said, they are praying to get rid of me. <clears throat> what do you mean they're praying to get rid of you? They are praying so that the promised judgment on the land will not happen. But they're not doing it out of the depths of their heart. They're praying to get rid of me. So I'll, I'll stop the flood and they can get on with their lives. They just want to get on with their lives. They don't really... They're not really repenting. They're praying to get this thing away from them. I, w I was blown away. That people pray just to get rid of the Lord. Imagine using a spiritual thing to get rid of the Lord. I have not found your works perfect before you. That's what, the point I'm emphasizing. I know your works. That you are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were cold or hot. So then, because you're lukewarm, I will vomit you out of my mouth. You know lukewarm soup is not the best. It's got to be hot or else, you know, it's just not soup. Lukewarm water can make you vomit, can make you puke, can give you bad feelings in your stomach. And that's what the Lord said about lukewarm Christians. They make him want to vomit. Revelation 2 and 4. Nevertheless, I have this against you that you have left your first love. He's talking to a church that had a lot going for it. And then he said, this is the one thing that they don't have going for them. They have left their first love. You remember when you just got saved? You couldn't hardly wait to get to church. You could hardly wait to say the prayers. You could hardly wait to join the singing. Now, you haven't read your Bible in the longest while. And you're home. 
Can you imagine people coming to Zoom meetings that they are at home and they're late? <laughs> I have never seen it in this fashion. They have no heat, no zest, no vigor, no vitality, no pizzazz, no excitement, no enthusiasm, no oom, no fire. They just, you know, if it happened, let it happen one time type of behavior. That's what it is. They have left their first love. They have left their first love. They don't want to talk to the wife that they used to talk to five hours on the phone. Oh, you hang up. No, 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 you hang up. Art man, you hang up? <laughs> no? Uh, okay, yeah. All right, bye. Click. <laughs> you hang up. <laughs> you have left your first love. You're not as fascinated with the things of God like you used to be. You have left your first love. Your attendance is questionable and everything else is questionable you have lost your first love Hosea 6 and 4 O Ephraim what shall I do to you O Judah what shall I do to you for your faithfulness is like a morning cloud <laughs> and like the early dew that goes away you know morning cloud they're going real fast your faithfulness is like the morning cloud you have no faithfulness at all because clouds change shape quickly. Boom, boom, boom. Bada bing, bada boom. And that's what he's saying. Your faithfulness to me is bada bing, bada boom. As soon as something else comes along, you're willing to jump ship. This last election, this 2020 election, has demonstrated that a lot of you Christians, you love your political party more than Jesus, your salvation, your God, the Holy Spirit, and everything that pertains to church. And some of you that thought you were not racial, all of a sudden you found that you hated other people because of their race you can't hide it and especially those of you that calling people racist is because that's who you are you can have your opinion about whatever party you like but nobody else must have an opinion about a party they like or else you get all you start calling them all these names you're full of hate you need to examine your life and be very careful that you don't put these politicians above your god because you are guilty of inordinate affection that you love people who make you lying promises more than you love God because at the end of the day whichever party gets in there they're not going to do much of anything for you they have demonstrated that already that they're out to fill their pockets don't tell me nothing don't write me no letters I know what I'm talking about our politicians are very greedy very greedy men very greedy so you got one side they're very greedy and the other side they're greedy and murderous too you don't agree with them your body is found somewhere floating somewhere don't write me no letters i have said what i have said that's my story and i'm sticking to it your faithfulness is like the morning cloud you blow away quick and like the early dew that goes away where's your faithfulness to god some people say when church open back they're not going <laughs> they're not going because they don't know if covid will get them so you know rev I'm not going. I'm going to stick around home a little more. And um, because I'm not too sure if I should go, I might get sick. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him. Underneath are the everlasting arms of God. Where, where's all that scripture gone? Where, where all that stuff gone? Where all that fire gone? You used to roll like a lion. Now, what's you, pussycat? Whoa, 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 whoa. Meow. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm just teasing you. I'm just teasing you. You know I will tease you. Faith over fear. We'll see about that. We'll see about that. Only take heed to yourself and diligently keep yourself, lest you forget the things that your eyes have seen, unless you depart from your heart all the days of your life and teach them to your children and to your grandchildren. He said, remember the things you have seen. Remember what the Lord has done for you. Remember the things you have seen in the house of God. The things you have seen God do. Remember that. Don't let these people fool you. Our party won. Our party won. Yeah, we know some party won. But it couldn't be both. Somebody's lying. And we rather believe God than y'all. Deuteronomy 8, 11 to 14. Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God. Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by keeping his commandments. Meow. 
<laughs> his judgments and his statutes, which I command you today, lest when you have eaten and are full and have built beautiful houses and dwell in them, and when your herds and your flocks multiply and your silver and your gold are multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, that's why I keep saying you can't serve a big God and remain small. But when these things happen and they should happen, it's just automatic that it should happen. Get out of Dodge talking about poor as a church mouse. When your heart is lifted up, don't let that happen. And you forget the Lord, don't let that happen. Who brought you out of the land of Egypt and from the house of bondage? He's saying, when these things happen, because he expects them to happen. Look, God expects you to eat and be full. God expects you to build beautiful houses. Not no raggedy house, beautiful houses. All them millions you spend on the house, the finish is just ragged. No, beautiful houses. He expects you to build beautiful houses and dwell in them, not rent them out. Live in them for God's sake. And when your herds and your flocks multiply, he expects you to own herds and flocks. And your silver and your gold are multiplied. He expects you to have silver and gold. He don't expect the foreigners to come and fly it out through the different airports and through the different porous uh, borders that the nation has. He expects you to have some of that. And when that your heart be lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and from the house of bondage. Never you forget God when the blessings start to flow because they're going to flow. It's expected that it will flow. The law is unalterable. You will reap what you sow. You will reap what you sow. You will reap what you sow. I remember back in the day, I had one pair of shoes. I was going to church. The shoe was a white shoe. I loved white shoe from a long time. I always have a white shoe somewhere stashed. Anyway, this white shoe got to the point where the big toe was bursting the side and I had it done at a cobbler, at a shoemaker, and then I had it dyed. I had it dyed brown. The same white shoe, dyed brown. I'm going to church faithfully preaching in my brown shoe. After a while, the, 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 the thing started to tear again. My brown shoe that was white started to tear. And so I would not move when I'm preaching. I'm standing behind the pulpit, and I'm preaching from behind the pulpit because I don't want everybody to see my brown shoe, which was a white shoe. And I'm standing there, I'm preaching, but I'm preaching, I'm sweating. This time the church was made of zinc. Zinc at the top, zinc at the sides, zinc everywhere. So you're sweating like a pig in a butcher shop and I'm preaching up. And then one day this sister came up to me. I was never so embarrassed. She said to me, who do you think you're fooling? So I thought, what is she talking about? She said, the brown is fading away and I can see through to the white. And um, like we have to bun you out of them shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and she said it with a straight face and she was you know she was kind of a angry with me for having just one pair of shoes boy i was so embarrassed anyway i took my embarrassment and i kept preaching i kept preaching and then one day i went into the the the, the jungle in the country in ghana i went to the jungle among these brethren who lived in the bushes they live out in the jungle you know what the lord said I want you to carry a pair of shoes for the pastors there. There were at least three of them that I knew. And I want you to carry a jacket and pants, suit for the pastors there, shirts to go with them. I want you to dress them as if they were going to a wedding. You know, dress them out. Give them the complete outfit with the shoe. So I did all that the Lord said and I went there. Give it to these men. They're so happy. All right. To make a long story short. I've never been out of shoes again. I've never been out of jackets again. I've never been out of shorts again. I've never been out of pants again. I've never been out of socks again. I have never been out of clothes and shoes and belt. I have never been out of it. I can choose to dress down when I want to. I can choose to dress up when I want to. I can choose to wear one color if I want to. I got a shoes to match everything that I have and I can match if I want to. I can match the shoes with the short now. Eh, 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 eh. What a mighty God we serve. Oh yes, you start somewhere, but I was faithful in my white shoe, brown shoe. And when she told me that, I went and got some black dye and I dyed the shoe black. She came and saw me with a black shoe. She shook her head like, who you fooling again? But she didn't say nothing this time. Just shook her head like, look at this joker here with his white brown 
black shoe. But God got me out of there. And I'm never going back. Ever. I'm never going back. I can choose to wear one pair of shoes only if I want to. I wear what I want to now. But then I only could wear what I had. <laughs> <Hoo -wee. laughs> the Lord has been mighty good. Yeah, he blesses your faithfulness. And that lady, I don't bother with her. She's a pastor's wife now. She's a pastor's wife now. And she is as miserable now as she was then. Same old miserable person. Only now she's a pastor's wife. <laughs> she hasn't grown to, to understand that, you know, there are seasons in here. My point is, you cannot serve a big God and remain small. You cannot serve a big God and remain small. You cannot serve a big God and remain small. That devil is a liar and so is his mother-in-law and all of his stepchildren. You cannot serve a big God and remain small. Oh yes. Psalm 44 and 20. So I had my days. I had my days of one shoe, one shirt, one pants. I had my days. Those days are never coming back. <laughs> I can laugh loud now. When story all is sweet, eh? I'm never going back. Psalm 44 verse 20 and 21. If we have forgotten the name of our God or stretch out our hand to a foreign God, would not God search this out? For he knows the secrets of our heart. Would not God search this thing out? That's why I'm so offended with the leader who is the leader now talking about this, uh, this, this God that um, every year they're going to have this at the state house. He brings this, this false God into the state house and he's having a service there and carrying on. And the, there are pastors who surround the leader and they wouldn't tell this man that this thing is totally contrary to the scripture and you're going to incur the wrath of God in this nation and uh, your party is going to fall. And I said that on one of my preaching. I went ballistic that day and I told off the top man in the nation. And oh, you can't, one man, the only thing he could tell me was, you can't call the, 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 the president's name like that. You have to say Mr. President or His Excellency. I said, instead of you correcting the man's folly, you correcting me, the Lord rebuke you. And of course he knew that I was not going to back down, so he just went his way. These people have no respect for God. How are you going to raise up a foreign God in the nation and bring them to the state house? It's not a cultural day where you got other people who can do their culture stuff. You got a prime minister there who believes in that stuff. Let him be the one to go and do that stuff. You're supposed to be some Christian and you entertaining a foreign God in the nation. Have you lost your mind? And the pastors don't have enough guts to tell the man, this is not the way to go, Mr. President. And rebuking me for saying that. Don't call the man's name. Um, say his excellency it's not excellent to be worshiping a foreign god how dare you bring that mess into the nation and and you pastors instead of you speaking up for god you you rebuking me to sit down i will not sit down i will bless the lord at all times his praise shall continually be upon my mouth my soul shall make our boast in the lord the humble shall hear thereof and be glad oh magnify the lord with me and let us exalt his name together i sought the lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears I told them this party is going to fall. Oh no, it can't fall. We got a solid toward the tree. Yeah, right. If we had forgotten the name of our God or stretched our hands to a foreign God, would not God search this out? God will search it out, man, for he knows the secrets of the heart. Don't tell me that he is the leader of all the nation and so all these foreign gods he's got to worship. No, you don't have to worship no, no idol God. No. H-E double toothpicks, no. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you should be hardened to the deceitfulness of sin. Sin is like heady wine. It gets people drunk, intoxicated. Sin will lure you away. Oh, we want to be in, in this group over here because money does flow like 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 water when they are they are running stuff they never mind it's it's illegal and illicit and blood money all over the place oh no we know we got to get some of that money i'm talking about christians now selling their soul to run behind a man who has lied to them before and will lie again let god be true and every man a liar you all need to believe that hebrews 5 11 and 12 of whom we have much to say and hard to explain paul said look i can't even explain some of this stuff since you are dull of hearing the reason i can't explain it to you is because you are dull of hearing you don't want to hear the truth you want nice 
platitudes. Look, what I would not give for a preacher who would tell me the truth. I'm tired of preachers lying and saying smooth things. Always prophesying Mercedes, Benz, and, and Lexus. What else is new? Come on, Rev. I know you're lying. You know you're lying. You know I know you're lying. I'm looking at you, looking at me, looking at you. Tell the nation the truth. Tell the people the truth. Of whom we have much to say and hard to explain, since you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers. Paul said by now, you all ought to be teaching people. You need someone to teach you again. Which means you were taught before. The first principles of the oracles of God. And you come to need milk. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. He's saying I can't give you solid food. Because you're a milky Christian. I know you're a milky Christian because you're easy to give up. I know you're a milky Christian because you got stressed as soon as things don't go your way. I know you're a milky Christian because two weeks into the COVID-19, you are already backslidden. I know you're a milky Christian because even when the house was open, you weren't attending. I know you're a milky Christian. You still need the milk of the word and the things that you were taught before. We have to teach them to you all over again. Some people have not gotten past tithing and giving. All the years they're in church, they haven't gotten past that. What else can you teach them? They are stuck at that. Until they get that sorted out, they will never grow. Once you don't obey the last word that God sends to you, God will not send you another word. And even when that word is sent and other people get it, you can't understand it because you have stumbled at the last teaching that you refuse to believe. And usually these are people who want to be on the deacon board and they want to have a financial report up from the church. You've got no financial report to get with your non-tithing self. And even when we call a meeting, you better not come because I will personally ask the treasurer to read the names of those who have not been faithful in their tithing and giving and then ask them to leave the meeting. And that's when some people get really upset. Well, how could you do that, apostle? How could you do that? I could do that because if you are not uh, interested enough in what the church has to do financially, you should not be in a financial meeting getting report to you for what? We don't owe you that kind of explanation. And this is where the church doesn't understand. They think you're being hard. Oh, pastor, just hard and stubborn. No, I'm not hard and stubborn. I'm just biblical. You want to come up in here, you got to do due diligence. You're not qualified to be in this meeting. Go leave. You see that? You see how you're feeling that heckle at the back of your neck? You're mad with me for telling you the truth. Well, go ahead and be mad. If a lot of pastors had stood up to some of these half-baked people that come to run the church, the church would be in a better place than it is. But you have sat down and allowed all kind of mess in the country and you wouldn't correct it. And if anybody dares to say anything that you think they're trying to correct it, you have the nerve to fight them and stop them. I started a church in the nation. And some of these pastors gathered in a meeting to ask how Esibum could come here and start a church without our permission. Doesn't he know he has to talk to the city fathers? Well, <laughs> I don't have to talk to nobody. The Lord tell me what to do. I'm going to do what he says. If you agree with it, to God be the glory. If you disagree with it, to God be the glory still. I'm not going to have to answer to God for everything that I'm doing. Not to you. Imagine that. Preachers getting together to quarrel about you starting a church vexed because you start a church without telling them or asking their permission I thought Jesus said go ye out into all the world that's what he said and like the man said in the song I man born ya <laughs> I man grow ya me just leave ya and go a Canada no way sir <laughs> Me I come a parika, me belly full, yeah. Oh, bless the Lord. All right, all right. Deuteronomy 8, 11 to 14. Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgments, and his statutes that I command you this day. Beware. Beware, brethren, lest in any of you there is an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Exhort one another daily, encourage one another daily. Hebrews 5, 11 and 12. Of whom we have much to say, but hard to explain, but since you are dull of hearing, 
For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again. And to teach you the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. Because you're a milk toast Christian. You can't handle heavy stuff. You like to be talked to nice all the time. You can't handle solid doctrine. You want people to uh, pacify you and give you the baby milk bottle all the time. And you don't want to clean yourself. You're 12 years old, 15 years old. And you still want to be in diaper and to be at mommy's breast. The devil is a liar. When are you going to grow? Reverend Esibum, I hate you. I can't stand you. I know. But I love you with the love of God. <laughs> For I see in you the glory of the King. And I love you with the love of God. I don't have time to hate nobody. You can hate all you want to. Talk all you want to with your coulda, woulda, shoulda self. Hebrews 12 and 15. Looking carefully. Looking first. How? Carefully. Lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. Don't let anyone fall short of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble. And by this many are defiled. Root of bitterness. There is nothing that shuts down your authority and your power and your glory in God. Like the root of bitterness. You're mad with somebody and then you're mad with somebody else. And you're mad with your friend. And you carry that bitter load all over the place. And your tech ups bitter. You can't praise the Lord anymore because you're bitter with the pastor. You're bitter with the deacon. You're bitter with the deaconess. You're bitter with the son of school superintendent. You're bitter with the leader of the, of the organization. You're bitter with the people that did you wrong. You're even bitter with the people that did you right. You're bitter. Your name is Mara and you look like Gaul. 2 Peter 2, 20 and 21. For if after they had escaped the pollutions of the world, they got saved, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them, in the thing that they escaped from, the pollutions of the world, and get overcome. The latter end is worse for them than the beginning. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandments delivered unto them. That's what you call backsliding. A gradual spiritual declension, a gradual spiritual decline. It's not an overnight thing. It happens gradually, gradually. Stop reading the Bible. Gradually stop praying. Gradually Stop attending church regularly. Gradually, stop being in the fellowship with Christians that challenge you. Gradually, you always have these ungodly company. Gradually, you rather watch a movie than say a five-minute prayer. Gradually, gradually, gradually. And then your companions change and you're full of all kinds of drug-addicted, lustful people in your company. And before long, you're out into the world doing worse than you used to do before. Satan always makes it seven times worse than when you started off in sin. You're worse. Jeremiah 6 and 16, Thus said the Lord, Stand in the way and see, and ask for the old paths, where the good way is. And walk in it, in what? In the old paths, where the good way is. Then you will find rest for your soul. But they said, We will not walk in it. Isn't that this young generation? They don't walk in anything that their parents walked in. And they feel like you're the fool for not stealing. They feel like you're the fool for saying hello, good morning, for having manners. They, they think that you're the fool for not quarreling back when people picking a fight with you. They think that you're the fool for being honest. This generation thinks that their parents are a bunch of fools. Because we walk in the old path. We're not trying anything new and fresh. No. We have seen your system. Your system is corrupt. Your system is full of stealing and lying and murder. Bloodshed. We have seen your system. You laughing at the church. We looking at you like... Who are these people? How could they not have a heart? Aren't they a human being? They are a human being, but they don't have a heart because they have left the old good path and they have eked out this new path. And your new path is full of rotten worms. Your new path is moth-eaten. Your new path is corrupting you and corrupting your children and grandchildren. Search out the old paths and go back and walk in them. Oh yes, I want my old time religion, man. I don't want this new thing that's going around. It's worse than COVID-19. It's deadlier than AIDS. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we confess our sin. Lukewarm people do not like to confess that they have done wrong. They do not like to confess that they have sinned. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper, but whoso will confess and forsake the same shall have mercy. Final scripture for today. I got a Zoom meeting on. That's why I came on early. 
Malachi 3 7 yet from the days of your fathers you have gone astray from my ordinance when your father's generation came off the scene this new one you have gone away from my ordinances you have not kept them return to me and I will return to you says the Lord of hosts the Lord is calling for the lukewarm believer the Lord is calling for the lukewarm preacher the Lord is calling for the lukewarm deacon the Lord is calling for the lukewarm sinner who knows his condition and knows that he needs to repent but he's waiting for a more convenient day and time as long as you live in sin and you're waiting for some other convenient time you have one less day to sin in and one more day to be judged from you better not live without God and I warn you you dare not die without God we're all racing to the grave in one way shape or form some of us will get there earlier than others what kind of an answer will you give to God when you stand before him for it is appointed unto men once to die but after this there is the judgment every man shall stand before God and give an account for himself every man all presidents prime ministers leaders business leaders millionaires billionaires dollar years and cent years every man will stand before God and the way things are going around the world now we know that judgment is not very far away you'd better get your life right with God oh yes you don't hear this kind of preaching anymore get your life right with God because you will answer God for you I wouldn't answer for you you wouldn't answer for me you leave me alone you do what God tells you to do I am doing what he tells me to do you may not like the way I do it but it's none your business are you doing what God has called you to do? Are you even born again? If you're not born again, you're not doing what God has called you to do. You must be born again. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Are you baptized yet? Not yet, Rev. Why not? How many more baptisms have to pass before you make up your mind to serve the Lord? Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his path. Let them return to the Lord and he will abundantly pardon. Father, in the name of Jesus, let the spirit of conviction come down on the people like a flood, like a rain, like dew from Mount Hormon. Let it stay on them until they repent deeply and with their whole heart and turn to the Lord in true repentance is my prayer. Turn the heart of the lukewarm, light them on fire again. Turn their souls up, turn up the temperature. Let God arise and the enemy be scattered. Break the hex, break the vex, break the jinx, break the curse, break the spell. Break the icy relationship that they have with you. Loose them from the cords of the enemy who's trying to come around them. I'm seeing an octopus tentacles wrapping around some people's feet and pulling at them. It's sitting on the on brown sand in an ocean and it's thrown out, the, out uh, its tentacles and it's got somebody by the feet and it's dragging them into the sea. You're tied up, man. You need to be loose. I loose your feet from the tentacles of the octopus. I loose your feet from the marine powers that hold you. I loose your feet from mama water. I loose your feet. I loose your feet from the marine spirit, from the marine kingdom. I loose your feet from the queen of the coast. I loose your feet. I loose them in the name of Jesus. I command that octopus to take its tentacles off, off of you. That suction that has you tied up, that stuck to you and dragging you. I cut it off that you can escape and that animal can, can grow back whenever it wants to but it must loose you and let you go so that you can serve the Lord in spirit and in truth this is my prayer today in Jesus name amen have a good one y'all God bless the boom is out